Good morning, sisters and brothers. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another exciting edition of Faith Matters, where we talk about faith because faith, after all, matters. matters. That never gets old to me. I know it gets old to you, but it doesn't get old to me. Uh, you know, sorry. It's like the wave, exactly. Ooh, let's do the wave. Yay, I know. Jesus. <laughs> and then it just sort of peters out off its own accord. Uh, usually there's a correlation to how bad the game is, to how strong the wave goes, but we digress. Now you got me curious. The worse the game, the better the wave? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's a really good game. Motivate. There's always a few people who want to start the wave, but most people don't care because they're really focused on the game. If got the it. game is terrible... <laughs> 61 to 3, people are like, what are we going to do? Oh, let's do the wave! And everybody gets really into it because yeah. they it's have like to have something to occupy their time. Something like that. Rally caps. Yeah, exactly. rally cap. Yeah, I never see rally caps in a baseball game if it's 14 to nope. 1. Nope. <clears throat> anyway, these are just the things that keep me awake at night, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know a little too much about me. <laughs> the anthropology of sports. I'm guessing, too, if it's 61-3 and your team has the three, beer drinking might have been heavier that day, which also might help the wave. That, that probably mm -hmm. could help the wave, right? Yeah, yeah that's a, totally. I guess that's We're not going to do the wave around here. We're not going to do the wave for the next half hour, either. <laughs> we haven't had enough beer. It's only 9 a.m. <laughs> if this was a 4 o'clock service, you never know. All right. This is a, a more or less guided conversation about the gospel, so let's plunge right on in to the gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. I'd add a historical note. Okay. Um, at the time of Christ, um, grapes were raised from England all the way through uh, uh, Israel, Turkey. So grape production was huge across a, a much larger swath of the world than exists today. The whole known world, really, and more than the people in Israel even knew. Mm -hmm. So grapes, yeah, grapes were an they everyday right. type of thing. And that's very much in keeping with the Gospels. Jesus uses imagery that people will be able to connect with immediately. So he talks about sheep. Now, most of us don't have an ability to deal with sheep. We don't see that as an everyday occurrence. And yet, in, in ancient Israel and Palestine, <clears throat> sheep were an everyday occurrence. Everyone had a frame of reference. The same is true of grapes. So yeah, this is an analogy everybody would get without explanation. Rachel. I, I'm struck by the repetition of the word abide. Mm. I'm with you. It's, uh. a very, it, it's a very comforting verb. I'm not quite sure all of the ramifications of it, but it feels very central to the thoughts in this passage. Mm. Yeah, I was going to see if someone could look that up. The specific abide word. Abide? I, yeah, as in, you know. To just sort to live in, to rest in, to, to just lean into, and to be a part of. Yeah, it's not usually a word we use these days, though. It's not a word uh -uh. we use. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and from this comes that wonderful hymn, Abide in Me, right? And uh, I think we're actually going to hear that at the 10 o'clock service. Yeah. 
Miss Mary. What I thought about loudly. And what I thought about in correlation to that was Christ refers to him as the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. He is the base, and then we build upon that. Everything else is built upon. Right. Upon yeah, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That is Jesus. And so, yeah, there is a parallel there between Jesus being the, the, the root, the plant that the branches grow off of, yeah. and Jesus being the cornerstone that things are built above. Good, good point. Yes, sir. I, you know, what jumped out at me uh, reading this for many, many years is he removes every branch. That sort of fascinates me. And by removal, it, it, it's almost saying, Okay, you know, you haven't done it. I'm not going to reach out to you anymore. You're dead to me. Mm. Uh, you know, you have to come back to me to bear fruit. And then mm. the pruning is following Christ, I'm assuming. But I, I just, it just jumped out at me. Uh, he removes every branch that bears no fruit. Yeah. Right. It's exactly what does that mean? Well, you want to be fruitful. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, you don't want to get cut off. Well, I think it's clearly metaphorical, uh, Gary, that um, we need to be intentional. Jesus is saying, uh, Jesus is saying about himself that he has been very intentional about being fruitful in every way. He knows, as David suggests, everybody's going to get the metaphor of you, you trim the dead branches. They don't bear fruit. Like Carol Thorson a few weeks ago yanked the pansy flowers that had withered said, if you take these off faster, it blooms new ones faster. She was doing what the gospel said. Right. And I clearly, metaphorically, we're invited to look at the dead spaces, the time-wasting or even counterproductive places in our life, and hopefully turn from them. I think that's a fair assumption to make. Like do a little of our own pruning. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Grapes, by the way, are produced on last year's canes. Okay. So uh, once... Uh, Cain has produced, uh, it's never going to produce again uh, unless it's pruned and, the, and then a new cane grows uh, from that end. Right. Uh, yep. And that will be next year's, last year's cane. And yep. roses are the same way, aren't they? We actually were, were fortunate we met with a horticulturalist, we, our landscape committee uh, met with a horticulturist just a couple of days ago here and we were looking at all the trees and plants around our campus and that was one of the things we looked at. Some of our, those trees that we have in our parking lot which we're not quite sure whether they were healthy or not, we were told yeah they really are healthy but here's your problem, you're not pruning them. You need to cut out the dead stuff. You need to pull off the, that little growth along the bottom that is just sort of sucking the life from the actual plant. And when you do those two things, these plants are healthy and they will grow so much faster and so much better for you. Yeah. So that just comes yeah, right from yeah. the gospel. Right, I thought of that too. The gospel right. according to Star Nurseries. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, w I wanted to share uh, oh, Kelly more. Go ahead. Were you gonna, gonna do that? Go, go ahead. for it. Please, you. That, you. Yeah, no, Kelly was saying that um, this is a team sport and only when we're plugged into the source, including both God and each other, that it works. Mm. And then Ryan was saying, we're nothing without Jesus. We need Jesus to be spiritually fed um, and he will remove sins if you ask. Yeah, yeah, good thoughts. Yes. Dina. Am I the only one? I, I think great joy and Right. Yeah. I, I'm looking at getting a new car. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, what Dina said was she really likes the phrase that says, you know, abide in me and, and I will abide in you. And if you abide in me, ask whatever you want and it will be granted you. And so she's going to go car shopping after church today. That's right. No. There is a danger there in thinking of God as Santa Claus, right? right. We don't just go up and sit on, on Jesus' lap and tell him what we want for Christmas, and he magically gives us a pony. But sometimes the pony does come. Sometimes the pony does come. <laughs> but, but you have to wait a long time because it wasn't ready. Well, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you have to be really serious about what you're asking for. And sometimes you don't know what you're asking for. So for your own good, you have to wait until it's the t right time, right? So God has a time for everything. God has a time. God's time is not That's our time. Right. I've seen it. it um, I have two things yeah. to say. The first is uh, I really on the earthly side, and it is this. I don't know that a life should be lived without ever owning at least one BMW. <laughs> <laughs> My second comment is, is more shifted toward the heavenly. I got to catch up then. <laughs> That's a, these are very. Don't strike him dead. Um, that I find with, with waiting for the lightning. <laughs> when when one prays an awful lot, and I know many of you will know what I'm talking about, you can feel the prayer lifting. If it lifts, it's kind of meant to be. And if you kind of like. If you pray, oh, God, smite my enemy, you are correctly hearing when God says back, no, vengeance is mine, shut up. Yeah. That's a prayer that's not lifting. Right. Make so-and-so's car wreck, because I, I hate them. No, this is not a prayer that's going to lift. So right. in the same way, when it comes to asking, I've, I've done asking prayers, and it's almost like this, as you as you pray them you become more and more receptive and you see that god actually wants greater joy greater satisfaction greater forgiveness all the good things in life including provision than we're even dreaming of it's all there if we pray our way into it and let it be a dialogue it's almost always better than we're asking for it's two bmws <laughs> So, so what I'm hearing is that Janis Joplin was wrong. Oh, Lord, won't you send me a Mercedes Benz? Eh, sorry, Janis, you should have asked for a BMW and you'd have been okay. Oh, man. The gospel according to Chris. Yeah, yeah, different strokes. I must make amends. Yes, yes. Well, Kim uh, Bodenhammer-Smith chimed in. I survey, she says, I survey my life daily for the bad vibes and whatever is good. The good vibes is life-giving, and that's what should get your attention. Mm. Words of wisdom. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, that's good. Good theology well, there. Yeah. But Kim votes for Land Rover. Heck, she says <laughs> Land Rover is the ultimate vehicle. There's a lot of those, so, yeah. I want to go back to the abide thing, because mm -hmm. I think there's something we haven't talked about yet. There's a whole lot of abiding in this, right? Yes. But the very first sentence, it's a short sentence, and yet we only pick up the beginning. Jesus says, abide in me as I abide in you. We minimize that second part. We focus on the first part and say, oh, okay, yeah, we have to live in God. But Jesus is also telling us, and I will live in you as well. There's a, there's a mutuality to it. So in order for Jesus to come and live in us, what do we have to do? We have to invite yeah. him. We have to say, come, Lord Jesus, come and live in me and let me live in you. And only then can I be truly happy. Right. And Rosalie kind of alluded to that. She says we need to get rid of the least important stuff in our lives because the insignificant stuff saps the energy from the source, which is God. So she kind of was alluding to that. Amen to that, yeah. Rosalie. So if you're sitting here watching this, friends, on, on one screen, and on the other screen, you have up the, um, the, the Google search for your fourth storage unit. You might not be in the right place. <laughs> right? Here's a tip. I think if you're going to abide in Jesus, you don't need four storage units. You might want to start to simplify and prune away some of that, right? Yeah. That is, by the way, the most growing business in Las Vegas right yes. now storage buildings and all the other 49 states in the union as well yeah. I, I just look around yeah. las vegas and i am i am in awe of how many storage buildings are being built we are paying people to store stuff that we don't use all the time right we are paying people to store stuff that we can't even put in our garage right, right. <laughs> well and people are living in smaller places like apartments you don't have an attic you don't have a basement so where are you right. going to store your stuff but then why do you need it right Th so that's the idea. Simplify. Important. Prune away those branches good. that don't bear good fruit. I do keep my Christmas stuff. 
Yes. Christmas exactly. stuff I get. Exactly. I, I do get Christmas. One storage unit, I'm, okay, I'm good. Four? What? I mean, back in New England, we had attics, we had basements. You could stuff stuff in there and never see it until the right. day you move out of your house. And then go, how did I get all this stuff? And, and, how, and what did we do when we moved here? We, got we went up into stuff. our attic. And we'd been married 20 plus years yeah. and we were looking at wedding presents that were still in the box that we never used but they right. sat in the attic Correct. Right. they yeah. did not make the move to nevada nope. <laughs> well, move right it's a good purge moving can be cathartic right and it's a good way to purge it's a good yes. way to purge or pretend or just leave it behind That's or just leave it behind yeah. the power of a godly yard sale Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Been and so, there. do you do you miss it? No. No. So exactly. Yeah. It really. I, I mean, I, I I sound like I'm being facetious. I'm really not. But it is really not that different than pruning those little suckers off the tree that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. They sap the growth of the of the plant, and they don't let it bloom into what it's supposed to be. The same is true of our lives. If we let stuff just sap away little bits of our energy it makes it so much harder for us to grow into the people God wants us to be. Right. Ryan was saying, if you don't use it within 12 months, get rid of it. <laughs> Way to go, Ryan. I have That's that right. I do the same thing with clothes. When I go through my wardrobe, I'm like, if I haven't worn this in 12 months, it's gone. Yeah. That's the uh, Marie Kondo. Is she still a name or is her five minutes of fame over? Um, that's her standard. It's is 12 it? months. And, yeah. and then the, the more emotional one is, does this item spark joy right. in your life? Do I have that right? Spark yes. joy? Right. Yeah. But you have to be careful with that one because people who are on that borderline say yes. Yes, they all spark joy in me. This old pizza box with a couple of stains of grease on it, it sparks great joy in me. <laughs> I remember the night we ate that pizza. That's right. right. 1978 was a good year. Then you take a picture of it and you put it in your phone. And you there you go. Put right. it in a folder. I know. Yes, ma'am. Let's please let's change yes. the subject. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And yeah. That's both abiding in Jesus, but also abiding in each other. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Good Jesus point. says, yeah. I am the vine and you are the branches. And you you're and you and you, you and you and you, we are all the branches. Right. We are we haven't hit on this mm -hmm. on this uh, passage. Those who say I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. Doesn't that remind you of just about every politician? <laughs> <laughs> they, I'm sure they, we've all they, done that. They, they say, I attend church every day, I pray for all my opponents, and then it, after they get done with that part, they go and say, but you know, these guys are no good, rotten <laughs> SOBs. Does anybody have an expectation that a politician is going to tell the truth? No. No. <laughs> there you go. We keep hoping. Yeah. We keep you know. hoping right? Well, yeah. the ones who tell the truth don't get reelected. Mm. You know, there's there's always that problem. What else? I think it's interesting that uh, I recently acquired a couple of linen crates, my own linen crates in my backyard, and with the help of Peter and Kathy. Yeah, which it's ones have been so properly so pollinated and which haven't, which huh. is a really cool thing. I'm watching them. Yeah. 
it is kind of interesting to have a fruit tree, especially here in the desert, right? We have, we just learned last year that this lovely green bush in our backyard is actually a pomegranate bush. Right. But we it, didn't know it had never blossomed right. until last it took year. Four years for it to produce fruit. It would blossom, but it would never produce a fruit until last year. Oh. We just thought it was a pretty green bush so. when we bought the house. <laughs> Who knows? Guess what? But now we know what it is, and now yes. we pay attention to it. Right. And so we prune it, and we look for the blossoms, and and it takes a long time. Pomegranates come once a season. They're bloom. They're starting now. They won't be ready till October. October is so late. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Can I ask a question about the Acts? Sure. The of the <clears throat> Acts of the Apostles. You know, this is really interesting to me. And what gets my attention is, in particular, is Philip, after the baptism, just disappearing and then showing up in another location. And um, throughout the book of Acts, it seems like the Holy Ghost is extremely active. Mm. I mean, from jailbreaks to um, uh, providing the words to speak to, um, I think of Dorcas, that, that she had died and Peter resurrected her. Mm -hmm. um, those that uh, didn't tithe it up and then lied about it were dead on the spot. So we really have an act of Holy Ghost. Um, it, do you think that the Holy Ghost is active in, in a visible way today? Absolutely. Can you give us some examples? I can give you examples in my own life. Um, so a, a parishioner a couple of years back uh, had to have some surgery. And I went to the hospital 5.30 in the morning to pray with, uh, with he and his wife. He went off into surgery. The wife was a, just a little uncomfortable. So I said, let's, let's go grab a cup of coffee. Uh, and then I was going to be on with my day. We had our little cup of coffee in the hospital lobby. She calmed. She was fine. And I was just about to leave when all of a sudden there was a tap on my shoulder. Excuse me, are you a priest? I love that when I'm dressed like this. <laughs> As if I would dress like this uh, other than Halloween, right? Uh, yes, yes I am. The tears start. My, my husband, uh, my, my ex-husband is upstairs. Um, he, he's dying, the family's here. Could you come and do last rites? Of course I can. Went up, spent time with them. Didn't, no, had no idea who they were, but I spent time with them. Uh, we prayed. It was about time for him to pass. The hospital staff asked us to step out. Well, they made a couple of adjustments, made him more comfortable. While I'm in the hall waiting with them, another tap on the shoulder, three doors down. Excuse me, are you a priest? <laughs> Same story. So I said, well, I'm, I'm sort of occupied right now with this, as soon as I'm, I'm finished with this family, I'll come down. Long story short, I was in that hospital for four hours that morning. Wow. ministering to people I had never met and I would never recognize if they walked through the door right now but I was where I needed to be that particular day and that was a spirit thing and by the way it had nothing to do with me it's where I needed to be the spirit just kind of pushed me there and despite the fact that I had other things on my plate that wasn't what it needed to be so yes I believe the spirit is completely active those families were in need and like Philip, who was, was sent that particular day, I was where I needed to be that day. I can tell you, by the way, from personal experience, that it's profound when a priest comes to see you when you're in an extremist in the hospital. Mm. Uh, it makes an impression on you that you will never forget. Um, uh, Michael Annis did that for me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and at the time, I thought I was dying. So, uh, and I remember that to this day. By the way, I pray for him every Sunday. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Father Mike that, was amazing. Uh, as, as the receiver of the blessings, uh, uh, when you're really, really at the edge, is profound. Mm. Yeah, hospital ministry is a, is a unique part of what we do. And I, I'll be very candid with you. When I was going through the ordination process, the thing that scared me most 
was hospital and hospice work. I, I was really not sure how I was going to handle all that. I needn't have worried because it's not me. It's God acting through me. And I, I, I don't have any problem with hospital or hospice. In fact, I, it, I can't say I enjoy it, but I will say it's rewarding uh, in, a, in a sort of a profound way for just that reason. It is, it is truly spirit given. And it's my privilege, and, and I'm sure you would echo the same thing, to be that non-anxious presence in the room and to watch God work on, on the people who are there. It's, uh, it's, it's profound. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Having been a recipient with both of my knee surgeries that came to pre-surgery room, it was made things go over. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah. Really, thank you for what you guys do. Okay. So, Let's Brian, the answer to your question is yes. yes. I truly right. believe the spirit is active. Right. Not in the, in the, we don't have the stories that we have in the Bible. You get a compendium of them, one after the other after the other. But I'm willing to bet if we went around the room right now, everybody has got two or three Holy Spirit stories that has impacted their lives. Yeah, sure. definitely. Right? Didn't, didn't and yet, and yet um, you know, you think, where was he when the Holocaust was going on? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is so painful to even think about. I know. I know. They rescued him. Well, you don't know.